Jesus Steel Born to action to the former falcons podcast this is episode number four i'm your host dj clint dog you can look up my stuff at clintdog.com don't forget to like the falcons facebook page and uh at mbl on youtube on youtube so uh give those videos a bit of a like and share and and listen to the podcast and share that too uh right but today episode number four we have an old school guest from 1995, Reggie Smith. You guys remember Reggie Smith from the Portland Trailblazers and uh, all the big guys there he played with, Clyde Drexler and Buck Williams. Remember when he came to the Falcons in 95? Well, we're going to talk about all that right now. Welcome to the show, Reggie Smith, episode number four for the uh, former Falcons podcast. Uh, how you going, mate? Welcome. Oh, good, good. Good to uh, catch up and... Uh, talk uh, some Australian uh, basketball, Newcastle, kind of reminisce. Uh, it's been a long time, but um, yeah. hope I can remember everything that uh, when I was out there. 1995, it was. That's a long time ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> tell us what you you actually did after you left the Falcons in '95. So, um, so I went and played in within in France in the top division over there. Where um, we had actually a really good team in France as well. Um, and we were playing in the Euro League, and so uh, yeah, I was having a great season. And it was, I think, it was just around maybe around this time, or maybe January, just a freak accident. I was chasing down uh, a defender, and one of my teammates. I went to block a shot. And one of my teammates was taking a charge at the same time, and as my foot hit the ground, the guy's um, head hit the inside of my knee and uh, dislocated my knee and tore all my lig- ligaments up. And, really? and that was, a, but um, I. Yeah, you know, I was playing. You know, I was getting to the point where you know, I, you know, I was definitely ready to get back to the NBA. But um, you know, freak, you know, stuff like that happens sometimes. Yeah, that's right. Speaking of the NBA, now before you came to the Falcons, now let me get this right. It was you played for the Trailblazers, Portland Trailblazers, in '91 to '94, was it? No, so I got drafted by the Trailblazers in '92, and so I played the two seasons there. So '92, '93 season, and '93, '94 season. Yeah. And so uh, we had a really good team. It was, you know, yeah. I had a stress. I, I had some starts, uh, like 10 or 11 starts, but it was just, it was tough to really crack that lineup on well, a consistent well, you, the lineup. Speaking of the lineup, you, you had Clyde the Glide Drexler, is that right? Clyde, Terry Porter, Rod Strickland, yep. the late uh, Cliff Robinson, yes. Kevin Duck, um, Jerome Kersey, yep. Buck William, Mark Bryant, even Chris Dudley came in. Chris Dudley came in, did he? At the end, did he? Yeah, he was there my last year. We used to scrap every day. Yeah, yeah I've seen it. I've seen Chris Dudley. I've seen that dunk uh, Shaq did on Dudley. But anyway, when he was in New York, that was <laughs> that was vicious. But yeah, you had some some superstars. Like that was the um, prime NBA time, and and you were yeah. actually on on the roster, like with, the, with no. these guys. Yeah, I got good. I mean, my rookie year, I didn't play that much. But yeah, for a while, my second year, I was in the rotation. And like I said, I was starting at one point when we had some injuries. But, um, it, you know, it, you know, we won 50, I think 50 plus games, 60 games a year, made the playoffs. Yep. Um, real vet team, right? So. Yes, yeah, some serious veterans in there. I mean, there's some serious NBA names in there. I mean, you know, like some of those guys you said. Did, did you actually play with uh, Tracy Murray as well, or was that in college? No, Tracy and I, we, myself, Tracy Murray, and Dave Johnson all got drafted the same year. Oh, okay. and we're in Portland. Me and Tracy are still friends. We we talk from time to time. Yeah, nice. 
Yeah. All right. Well, back to the Falcons. Um, you made the finals 1995 when you were here, and there's a final series versus the 36ers, Adelaide 36ers. You just won game one at home, and then the next mm-hmm. two games were in Adelaide. And uh, we had Sean Dennis on the show a couple of episodes ago, and he, he sort of said that you got sort of reft out of the game. Is, is that right? Played out yeah, of the game I mean- sort of thing by the refs? I mean, I was honestly, I was always running my mouth and complaining about stuff, yeah. you know, as far as rap, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I was a physical player, right? And not to say that it wasn't a physical league and, and there wasn't physical players in, in the league, but yeah, you know, I was, you know, 6'10. I mean, there probably at that time probably wasn't as many, let's say, 6'10 athletic bigs in the league, right? Ah, zero, and, probably you. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you had Mark Brackey, but I can't remember. Did you, you know he was in and out? You know, did, kind of yeah. doing other things. I think Willie so. Simmons. He's another seven footer, but I don't know if he was. He might have been in Adelaide. I think he was a backup import that year. Yeah, yeah, but, but uh, yeah, they played you out of the game. The refs apparently, and, and I've got a bit of footage of that um, final series from '95. Uh, there's not much of you in there because you're, you're probably sitting on the bench most of the time, you know? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of files. But, you know, I, that's my style of play. I was aggressive. You know, I wanted to be able to defend, block shocks, shots, uh, be an intimidator. Yeah. And, um, and and like you see it now, right? The, the post game, you know, bigs, you know, you can't touch the guards. Then there's a switch and you got a, a small, someone undersized on you. Yeah. You know, you try to power through them. They flop and, you know. Yeah. You know, you pick up a couple charges a game and then they're reaching and then, you know, you, you can't play your style the rest of the game. Yeah, exactly. So the Falcons ended up losing that, that series two games to one. I'm not quite sure if Adelaide went all the way or not, but yeah, that was a, there's some footage of that. I got the footage on the um, NBL on YouTube page. If everyone, you know, the listeners out there want to listen to that or, or have a look at it, but your college career, Texas, uh, you were at, is that right? No, Texas Christian TCU. Yeah, TCU. Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I I started 121 games straight at TCU. So I, you know, since you know day one, you know, I was the starting center there, and uh, I think throughout my career, um, didn't miss a game. I think I missed one practice. I was like the Iron Man there, right? So one practice, okay. Not, didn't miss a game, but a practice. <laughs> yeah. One practice, right? And so uh, we have, you know, when I came in the year before, I think they won five or six games, and every season we had a winning record there. And you know, I was, you know, especially my first two, well, all four years, I was surrounded by some really good players. And uh, you know, my my senior year was a really special year. And, and when you, you, you talk about getting filed out, right? We lost yeah. to Houston in um, the conference finals, not the conference finals, uh, the semifinals in the conference tournament. And you know, I. To this day, I watched that game, and there's some fouls that I wasn't even in the play that I picked up somehow, yeah. and we ended up losing in, I think, like double overtime. Uh, who, who was on your team at Texas, at TCU? So we um, so we had a Brent, uh, point guard named Brent Atwater. We had a uh, shooting guard named Michael Strickland. Um, another, you know, like two, three guard, Albert Thomas, Alan Tolley, um, and, and – you know, who we had that wasn't playing at the time, uh, I think he was a freshman, or he was probably a sophomore, was Kurt Thomas, oh, yeah. which played 18 years in the, in the NBA. So he, um, so, and then we had another guy named Mark Moten. So, and, and honestly, if Kurt Thomas would have been healthy, we probably, I mean, we'd have gone deeper, uh, you know, into the NCAA. Uh, we made the NIT and we won a couple games, and then we lost, um, but we would have made the NCAA tournament if we probably, if Kurt Thomas would have been healthy. Yeah, I, I- uh, what's what's the guy Strickland you said you played with there? Yeah, so his name Michael Strickland. So he didn't, you know, he. Just, I think he. I don't think he played after that, but he was an incredible player. He, you know, he, um, you know, we beat uh, a ranked Arkansas team, and I think he's hit nine threes and like twenty seven points. Yeah, uh, a, a real good compliment to me, right? Yeah. Um, where they couldn't sag off on him or, or drop on me, and so. Um, but we, I mean, my team across the board was. We were solid. We yeah. we could go. We, it was only like, I think we had we were like seven deep, and it was, uh, it, 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 we we had a nice squad. All right, back to the Falcons. So take us back. Uh, you know the the early talks. Uh, was it with Tom Tom Wiseman about coming to the Falcons, and and how did all that go down? Do you remember? I just remember <laughs> my agents 
hey, you're home, you're rehabbing, there's your team in Australia um, that needs a, a big, would you be interested? You know, they don't have a ton of money, yeah. but they can kind of, you know, do some things uh, to, to make it worth your while. And so I'm like, hey, you know, they put me on the plane, got me there, and um, it, um, you know, I, I had a good time. I mean, we, we had, a, I was, you know, I had no idea what I was getting into, right? Yeah. I didn't know the history of the Falcons, you know, how they were, if they were good the year before okay. or what the expectations were, all those kind of things. So, but we had a good team. Yeah. Well, the team, I've got the roster right here in front of me. You had Sean mm-hmm. Dennis, Mike Johnson, you had Craig Adams, uh, Tony Jensen, who the next year, I don't know if you know or not, went on to play for the Boomers. Uh, mm-hmm. He's actually on the bench. You know, the Shane Hill, Charles Barkley thing. Uh, yeah, he's actually yeah. in the footage on the bench when when he all gets hammered by Charles Barkley. But you also had Kruger, Marty McLean, uh, yourself, Matty Alexander, Butch Hayes was the other import, and uh, Dave Bowden, the rookie yeah. guy. Um, yeah, Dave Ankeny and Tom Wisman were the coach that year. What were the yeah. guys like? Tell us what the guys were like, uh, like on no. the court and off the court. <laughs> we, I mean. <laughs> You know, yeah. honestly, honestly, everyone battled, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I was uh, pretty brash back then and, and probably was running out of my mouth a little too much and, and thought, I, you know, I kind of came in with a big head, right? Look, I'm going to dominate this league and that kind of stuff. Um, well, you sort but, of did. Like, <laughs> but I enjoy, I mean, really, I enjoyed, I mean, I enjoyed playing with everyone, but playing with Grant and Maddie, yeah. just two brewers, you know, physical, um, kind of complimented what I did. Yes. And then, but. You know, as far as uh, and De- and Sean Denson is just getting me the ball and that kind of stuff. You know, mm. me and Tony uh, bumped heads sometimes. Right. You know, but but it's you know I, I'm I'm a center, right? He's a two guard. Yeah. You know that, that you know you you always bump heads with, with your two guard, right? I'm like you're shooting too much. He's probably thinking I'm shooting too much. Give you know, all times of stuff. Yeah, I'm like, hey, give me my touches. Yeah. You know, you can get touches anytime, and so but we and we had a good team, right? Yeah, you made like I said before, you went all the way to the the finals, but got knocked out in the first round. But for the Falcons, that's pretty good because uh, it was a packed house at home. I remember that game; it was a real yeah. packed house, and and that's why you won the first game because of the crowd. They got behind you, and yeah. it was it was really good there at the Entertainment Center because not not much uh, playoff basketball was being played or had been played in Newcastle since then. But uh, yeah, it it went on um, it went on. Like the Falcons went on to, you know, do some good things after that. They they folded in yeah. 98, 99. But tell us about uh, your back injury, your rehab and stuff like that. Is that is that what you're out here for, rehabbing your your back? I needed a disc when I was playing in Spain, right? And so um, I didn't need surgery or anything like that. I just really needed to strengthen my core. And so as I'd wear down, right, it would inflame. And I'd get like little like shocks, you know, down like my, my leg or my butt. Because I think you missed like maybe one or two games here. In, this, in Australia, the, in the '95 season, is that I don't right? remember. I don't remember missing any games. I, I remember I left and didn't play in the All Star game because I, I wanted to get home because I hadn't been home in so long. And right, so, uh, right. but but really, I, I wore a back brace, all that kind of stuff. And oh, yeah. you know, you know, defenders would constantly kind of jab me in my back and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. <laughs> dirty know. tactics. Yeah, it was all good though. Yeah. It, it was fun. There's a few highlights. <laughs> um, like I said, I've got the videos on the NBL on YouTube page, but there's a few highlights of yourself. I think they they sort of kept running them in '96, the year after the, the uh, you weren't even here, and they're showing your dunks and stuff like that. You know, pumping up the the NBL, going to the ad breaks and things like that. But they're all up on the YouTube page. But um, after the Falcons, you actually you you went to France. Is that right? Yeah. So I had a choice. To go, so Kevin McHale called and he's like, "Hey, we have a spot with Minnesota." Um, you know, he was telling me all the great things, and uh, I had just bought a house in in, in California, and um, and it was a nice deal. And at the end of the conversation, I'm like, "I'm like, is it guaranteed?" And he and he said, "No." And I said, "Well, I need one more year, where you know I'm going to get my touches, I'm going to get the bulk of the playing time." Because the last thing I wanted to do is go back into the NBA and, and sit sit on the bench, right? Yeah. And I, I felt like I was just about getting to the point where I had figured out the game, which typically it takes a little longer for bigs, right? And there's some holes in my in my offense, like free throw shooting and that kind of stuff, okay. and some some work. 
that I wanted to work on. And so um, I fell into another really good situation in France where we had, I think, three or four nationals on the team. We, that team ended up winning. the. We won the French Cup, right? Right. So I was playing against Orlando Woolridge. Oh, okay. Uh, in France. Oh, yeah. Dominique Wilkins. Uh, Tom, I mean, I dunked on Tom Chambers. Tom Chambers, I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it was like <laughs> they were towards the end of their career. So I'm like, hey, this is my chance, right? So, yeah. um, so it, was, it, was, it was a good experience. And so I just unfortunately got hurt. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying before. They kept showing the dunks and stuff after, you know, you did some pretty serious dunks out here in 95. and got. You I, know. I had, that, that, that was, uh, uh, I had some, yeah. I mean, I, I look at those clips and I, I show my son and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the, those guys aren't like NBA guys. And I'm like, dude, the NBA is is a nice league, right? They had some, they had some solid, they had some good national players, right? Yeah. And it was up, up at the time, right? <clears throat> and so, uh and you see now, you know, they start to uh, send these kids over there and play in the NBL and then, you know, for a year and then, then bring them over back into the NBA. Yeah, well, we've got, I don't know if you know or not at the moment in the NBL, we've got uh, the Next Stars program. And what it is, is, is it's a, like a, um, you get a Next Star that's going to make the NBA draft mm-hmm. a couple of years before he goes to the draft. Yeah. And, and I don't know what, I think the NBL pay their salary or something like that, but it's it's now the NBL is, is a... Well, it's it's second or, or third to the NBA on, on the world stage. It's it's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some good players that come over. You know, I, I pay attention, right? So yeah, um, you still you watch know. some of the NBL? Not some. I watch the I, I know I watch the players that are coming in, or, or you know, from the NBA or Australia and playing in the NBA, right? Yeah, and just yeah. to come. there's and, a lot and of Aussies been, in the NBA now too. You know, a lot yeah, of those no, big men. Good. You know, yeah, there's some good talent. So. You got Patty Mills and and guys like that in Brooklyn. And have you seen? Yeah. Um, oh, actually, you were a little bit before. You were here a couple of years before Dave Simmons came to Newcastle. His son Ben I, playing in Brooklyn. I played Simmons. I played against him with with. So he was um, with the Tigers then, I think. Yeah, yeah, Mel. Yeah, I played with him. Yeah. He got yeah. Well, we had some. It's interesting because I tell people I'm like, hey, I played against his dad. Yeah, yeah. His dad, his dad had a jump shot, right? And <laughs> which, you know. I didn't want to come out there and chase anyone with a jump shot. So yeah, no, his 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 dad had some serious game, and uh, he actually uh, my my like you said, you, you used to play against him. My claim to fame is I DJed I DJed his uh, daughter's sixteenth birthday. That's my oh. claim to fame. Yeah. <laughs> so if anyone asks about Ben Simmons, that's what I say. <laughs> yeah, he's he was a good player. And who else in the league do you remember for that year from from '95 that you played against? That was, that was pretty you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, the big thing was like, hey, Mark Brackey, right? And it was like he was the other big, right? So I got a chance to play against him. I think that, um, I think that was the year, or, or maybe at the end of the year or the year after. That's when he went to the Philadelphia 76ers. I think he played uh, half a season there. I think that was yeah. The, I must, after yeah, after I left, so yeah, but, it might yeah, have been '96 maybe. Yeah, I played. I think we only played one game because like there was something where he was like. Like he wasn't all in, and he was traveling with his girlfriend or wife that was playing tennis uh, or something. Yes, like. yes, he went on the uh, the tour with his wife or girlfriend at the time. She was a tennis player. Yeah, he, yeah. he went on the Wimbledon tour or something with her, and didn't that that was that year. He didn't play the first eight games or something of the season. But yeah, you're yeah. right; he was pretty much the only big man that would sort of keep up with you in, in the NBL. Well, you know who I wanted to play against because I heard a little bit of hype about him, and he was young, right? And probably wasn't ready to play against me. Was the kid uh, Chris Anstey? Chris Anstey, um, yes, yeah. So, uh, um, and he might was he playing? He might have been with Melbourne, right? He was with and the Magic. So, okay, that's where it was. One of those teams, and so um, I'm like, hey, let's see what all the hype's about. But they didn't play him that game, so I was like, okay, well, uh, okay. yeah. Well, he went on to play for the Mavs, the Dallas Mavs. I think he played. Uh, Maybe 97, 98, a few seasons there. And he actually played in the Bulls as well, Chicago Bulls, a year after. So yeah, yeah. Th- these guys, you know, they ended up making the NBA. And, yeah. yeah. But that's what I was saying to you before about the highlights and stuff. Um, with, with, I, I attended a couple of the Falcons practice sessions and, and, and just watched and stuff like that. But yeah. I was on the baseline one time and there was a bit of a dunk there that you actually missed. And it was like... You, it was just like a tip into you, and you just 
slammed it, dunked it straight in. And that was like, when I seen, I was like, well, that's why he was in the NBA. <laughs> What's he doing here in the Falcons in the NBA? Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't want to sit on the bench. And really, it was unfortunate. I mean, it was fortunate I got drafted, right, and, and played in Portland. Yeah. But I wasn't going to, I mean, I wasn't going to crack that lineup consistently. Yeah, with and, those guys you know, we mentioned before. Yeah, you, you, you know, I wasn't sitting on the bench anymore. I was like, dude, I, you know, I need to play, right? And so, um, you know, I, you know, I, I want. I was like, hey, I was young. I'm like, hey, I went to play in Spain. You know, hurt my back there. Played in Australia. Played for. You know, I was just, I just wanted to play, right? Yeah, yeah. So tell us what the uh, you you wore number fifty four, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us what the significance of, of the five four is. Well, it's just, you know, when I started playing back, first of all, I was a soccer kid, right? And uh, and I, I, it was like a crossroads, right? And I um, I got too big to play soccer, and I couldn't find shoes for my feet. And so I'm like, I told my dad, I'm like, look, I'm done. I don't want to play soccer. And he's like, well, you're going to play something. And I'm like, well, what? And so he took me and uh, down to the, the middle school or the junior, I can't remember. And they, they already had trials, right? And so he told the coach, and my dad was six seven, pretty intimidating. And he's like, my son wants to be on this team. And he's just the coach looked at me, he said, okay, you know, because I was, you know, I was about six, maybe I was like at that age, about five eleven, but I was still taller than most of the kids, right? Still growing. <laughs> <laughs> Only number they had, right, was fifty four, right? And so, so I'm like, okay, and and, and honestly, I wasn't. Um, I'm like, it's cool, but. You know, whatever. And then I remember, you know, watching the Bulls play and watching Horace Grant, play, you know, wear 54. Right. And I'm like, I, I, you know, and so I just, you know, I just, you know, and I'm like, hey, that's a cool number. And I just kept on throughout, you know, high school, you know, college, yeah. pros. The only, only, the only time I wasn't wearing 54 is when I got hurt. And I was playing in, in, in France, right? And yeah. They don't go. They only go up to like thirteen. So I took the highest number. Oh, right? okay. Four to fifteen numbers they had or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But every I'm like, hey, I got to be fifty-four. I got to be fifty-four. And no one wants fifty-four, so it was an easy number to get. It's right? a high number. <laughs> yeah. I, no one cared about fifty-four. So, and that was just that. Really, that that's what it was in a nutshell. Yeah. Right. Oh well, I I I heard a bit of a rumor there was um uh, another story behind that, but obviously not. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I, I actually I can't remember what it was, but the, I thought that by you by me mentioning it, you'd bring it up and re I'd remember, but I, I can't actually remember. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. It was maybe uh, something to do with college. I, I'm not quite sure. Maybe it was what you just said with the with the. Yeah, I mean, I wore it throughout college. I mean, that was my number, right? So yeah. All right. Well, 32 is my number. So anyway, <laughs> but um, nice. did you um have any like out of the the was it? I think it was 10 guys back in the day there. They've, they've actually um, upped the roster in the NBL now. You can have, uh, I think it's 12 players and a, a development player. So there's like, or it might be 11 players and a development player. And there's also now three imports in the NBL. So mm. out of the 10 guys that you had in 95, if you can remember any you played with, who was the, the most exciting to play with and, and all that type of stuff? Well, I mean, so but Butch was a good player. I mean, like he was your the point other guard, player. yeah. He was gonna feed you, right? Yeah, Tony. Tony was a, was a really good player. I just, you know, we bumped heads, you know, about like don't use me as a decoy, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I, I want my dunks, right? You know, you know, drop it off, and you're gonna get your buckets, right? Yeah. So stuff like, but, but yeah, you know, dude, he got he was a good player. You know, I enjoyed playing with Grant, Maddie. Um, you know, um, Johnson, you know, when he got hot in his threes. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we just, I, you know, I, I can't, I mean, I don't know if I'm missing anyone, but yeah, I mean, I just thought we had a, we were built pretty even, right? And we complimented each other, which was yeah. nice. Well, you missed out. There's Marty McLean, Dave Bowden, uh, Matty Alexander. He would have been another one, good one, because he was a yeah, Matt, poor man. Yeah, Matt, would hang out. Actually, Dave and I would hang out, and you know, after games and stuff, and you know, go out drinking and stuff like that. And then, um, and Marty, right? He could yeah. shoot the ball. Yeah. You know, he was a scrappy guy. I mean, you I know, I think he went on to play about three hundred NBL games. So he he made oh, some. Yeah, yeah. He kept going a couple of years after that. And I think no, he was. I think Mike Johnson retired maybe 
96 or 97, something like that, yeah. No, they're, they're, they're all fun to play with. Whereabouts, if you don't mind me asking, whereabouts did you, if you can remember, did you like to go out to in, in Newcastle? Dude, that, I don't, we had the brewery. I, I, you know, I honestly, I don't remember whoever, wherever they would take me. Yeah, right? you'd go. <laughs> and so, and like, I was hanging out with some cheerleaders and they would take me to different places and that kind of stuff. And, um, yeah. You know, nothing shut down to like like five in the morning out there, it right? Was five thirty. They've changed the rules now. It's actually three three o'clock now, and and they've got like lockout laws. This happened about ten or fifteen years ago. Uh, mm-hmm. I think you can't get in after twelve after midnight, and once you're in, you've got to stay there, and once you leave, mm. you're gone. And and they shut yeah. at three now. But the clubs used to close at five o'clock in the morning. It used to be. Yeah. It used to be like. Um, sunlight when you're leaving and it's like what have i been doing and yeah or they brought in all those curfew laws and 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 cut it back to three o'clock so it's a bit bit more tame now in newcastle yeah i got caught out a couple times where i was out too late and we had practice at nine in the morning so it was uh yeah uh i'm sure tom wasn't happy with that but you know (laughs) what about tom tom wiseman was was he a good coach because he lasted a couple of more seasons, and then Sean Dennis went on to coach the Falcons, took over from Tom. Yeah, I really like Tom. Right? I mean, he he understood me, right? Um, and he was fair, right? Now, you know, I, I did have to write some checks, right, for for some stuff, right, that I probably shouldn't have done or said. Oh, okay. um, yeah. But he was fair, right? Or I had to run, you know, and and he was fair, and you know, and um, you know, but like he was, he was. Um, you know, you know, come game time, like he knew, right? Like, look, I need to get my touches. You know, we need to get Tony his touches. We need to get, you know, he knew, you know, whose egos to feel, you know, feed and all that kind of stuff to get the job done. So, yeah. Um, but no, I like Tom. So. Yeah. No, that's good. What about um, uh, your favorite or or best team to play against in the NBL? We had the Magic, right. the the Geelong SuperCats back there back in the day. It's just all the big teams, right? You know, I mean, like um, the Perths. Yeah, I mean, like who, what? What was the team that uh, Andrew Gaze and, and Dave Simmons were on? That, that I mean, the Tigers, Melbourne, that, Melbourne Tigers. I mean, to play against them and um, the Magic. Oh, the Sydney Kings. Oh, Sydney God. Kings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that I mean, with uh, what's his name, Leon Trimming. It was Trimmingham uh, there then? Yeah, Trimmingham yeah. and, and um, who else would they have that year? Was Mario Donaldson? I think that year. Yeah, I don't remember, but it was like because he was like he Above was the, the dunker, rim. right? <laughs> yeah, right. And so it was just like, hey, I'm gonna get my dunks. You can get your dunks, yeah. And I'm gonna go after, and I'm going after your dunks, right? So you know, stuff like that. He was a phenomenal athlete, oh, um, yeah. but uh, yeah, I remember but the, one, those were good uh, games to play. Yeah, right. I remember one game at um at at the King Dome in Sydney, and and it was when you guys were playing, and I think Kruger. I'll always always remember this. Um, I think he got fouled out, and you know the. Um, I'm not quite sure whether he's won or lost that game, but he got fouled out, and it was pretty close. And the crowd, it was like ten thousand, fifteen thousand people or something, were booing him, and mm-hmm. and he just stood. He just stood in the middle of the court, and he was staring staring down the whole crowd like. I will take I will take every one of you individually, <laughs> you know. I'll take you on, and it was I'll never forget that. And, and I was with a mate of mine who doesn't even follow basketball, and I just thought that in my head when it, when it happened. And he doesn't even follow basketball. And on the way home, he's saying, "How's that number eleven guy standing in the middle, thinking he's going to take on everybody?" You know. So he he was tough, man, Krugs. He he was tough. Yeah. I'm, you know, honestly, I'm glad I played with him and Maddie versus playing against him and Maddie because yeah. those dudes would mix it up, right? Yeah. And it was just they knew, right? Like, look, Reg, you don't take those fouls. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, we will I'll take care of. It, yeah, right. Yeah, now that would have been that would have been good to have them guys on the team because they both had pretty similar games. They uh, both shaved heads. Yeah, yeah. Tough, <laughs> both four men. Bad. You know, <laughs> like guys too, like off the court, just nice. But on the court, freaking mix that shit up in a minute. Vicious, yeah, vicious. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the best uh, hard men the NBA will ever seen. But um, yeah. speaking of centers and, and stuff like that, like yourself, um, the Falcons, like, to me, you were probably one of the best centers to ever to come to the Falcons and probably mm. the NBL. But 
with the with the Falcons, we also had um, I think it was ninety eight. Um, Todd Munt he came. Todd Munt played for the Boston Celtics, I think, and Atlanta Hawks in the NBA. I've actually got um, uh, the old game NBA Live on PlayStation mm-hmm. and stuff. He's actually in the rosters. He's actually in the oh, roster. What? Yeah, so he came out here to play for the Falcons, and he was he was like yourself. He was a cut above the rest. He sort of uh, you could tell why you know, that he played NBA and, and there was another guy, uh, AC Earl, uh, he played for the Celtics there. He came out in yeah. for, for the Kings. He played for the Sydney Kings and he dominated okay. like yourself. He, he just dominated and you could tell that the, the game was a different game playing like above the rim. AC Earl was seven foot, right? So he was, yeah. and he had a nice little game to him. So I can see, you know, I was raw, pretty raw, at, uh, you know, as far as my offensive skills, I had, you know, I knew what shots I could make and what I couldn't make and, and what shots, you know, I would force up from time to time. But, you know, some of those guys were pretty polished. Yeah. There was a couple of blocks there as well that you, you got a few blocks there. And, uh, that was one of the, the, the things they, they ran on the highlights reel. There's a, um, a block that you do, I think it's at home. You block, uh, I can't remember who it is, but you, you blocked it and you actually, talk, you know, pointing the finger and talking to the trash man. So I think it might have been to the ref. Call that or something, or, or call the call before or something. You're saying that's one of the highlights that keeps being played over and over. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, you know, I, I ran my mouth a lot, right? And it was just like, <laughs> I'm sure those guys were like, dude, why is this guy got so much energy, right? And so. Uh, and it wasn't so much towards like opposing teams, but to the refs. And I was always feeling that I was slighted. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd love my blocks. And I think I had one I threw out into the stands. That might be um, the one I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the I one think they that, replay over and over. Yeah. I think that was Trimmingham. He, you know, but I think I caught him. Actually, yes, you know. it was Trimmingham. It was. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. He went up for, he didn't, he wasn't going up for the dunk. He was going up for the, the double pump layup. <laughs> You know, shake the rock, and and I think you slipped that fifth fifth uh, row back in the stands. Yeah, I caught him on the double pump, right? So, mm. but he was a phenomenal athlete, so he was fun to play against. Yeah, no, that was pretty good. Uh, is there anything else you you want to mention before we uh, end up the podcast about the Falcons in, in nineteen ninety five? No, I, have I, I mean, asked you whereabouts you lived in Newcastle. Did I ask you that before? Yeah, I, I honestly I don't remember. You don't remember? No, all right. No. You know, I had a nice little spot, and you know, it was it was enough, right? So, yeah. but um, uh, but it was uh, you know, it was it was good. Um, I had a good time out there. I mean, honestly, if if they could have paid more, right? Yep. Um, I would have stayed, right? Um, yeah, but no. it just, uh, you know, it just it, it really just didn't work out. Um, and and honestly, I need well, let me kid. I, I mean, I wanted to get back to the NBA, right? And yeah. so. Yeah. You know, and, I, I, you know, I, there were some other steps that I needed to take care of before, you know, from getting, and it was not anything against the NBL or anything like that, because it did help with my uh, progression to get to where I wanted to be. And yeah. like even getting to play um, in France and playing the Euro League and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, those guys were good. Right. And, um, you know, just the team. I, I mean, I had a, yeah, I don't think I've ever been on a team where I just didn't like anyone, right? And so it was just a good, good bunch of, you know, after the game, you know, let's drink all the beer in the locker room yeah. and then let's just go hang out and, you know, do whatever we do. And you got to see all of Australia pretty much, the capital cities. You you played in each one yeah. and all that type of stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I did some really fun things. I mean, the Opera House and, and like... Oh, you did all that when you were out here? Yeah, he made us go to some play. And I'm like, dude, come on. But, yeah, I'm young, Tom right? Wiseman. I'm like... Yeah, I'm like, and it was like mandatory. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? And um, but I'm now thinking back, and I'm like, hey, I'm glad I got that experience, yeah, right? Because yeah. uh, you know, you, you you sometimes you take things for granted that you're going to have these opportunities, yeah. and um, you know, and you know, sometimes you just don't, right? So, but but like Tom was a good coach, right? He, you know, yeah, you know, I compare him to like a Phil Jackson, yeah, right? Yep. Just demeanor. Right. And he's going to let things try to try to he's going to let you try to figure things out yourself before he intervenes. Right. OK. Yeah. And so. Um, but no, he did a good job. Yeah. No, that, he's a pretty good recruiter, Tom, because uh, the year before he got the, the 1990 MVP to play Derek Rucker. And uh, that's whose place Butch, <laughs> Butch would have took in 95. But he's a good recruiter. Yeah. And, he, and, you know, he, he got Tony Jensen and guys like that. And yeah. Yeah, he's made the finals in 95. 
Whatever happened to Tony? Tony, I think he's still in Newcastle. I think he still is. Mm-hmm. He actually went and played. Uh, no, he actually got a little bit sick. That's right. He had he he. I think it was ninety seven and maybe ninety eight. He was actually, um, from what I heard, from what I was told, he, he had um, he was on his deathbed, so to speak. And he oh, wow. yeah, and, and he survived. And he came back. I think the final year of the Falcons, he played at like a, a lower um, mm-hmm. level position, but like a seven or eighth man. But he he came back. And then I think once they folded, um, I think he might have played a year or two for the Canberra Cannons. And, okay. and that was it. He came back to Newcastle to live. Okay. Well, if you ever run, any, you run into any of those guys, tell them hi for me. And, I will. Um, I will. And, but, you know, it was it was a pleasure to play with them. We battled and, you know, I wish we could have won, gone a little deeper in those playoffs. But, um, mm. you, know, uh, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. Yeah. Just before we go, I just remembered I've got a commercial with you and Tony Jensen for um, uh, might be Mitsubishi for one of the car yards mm-hmm. out here, and uh, mm-hmm. I think it's um, uh, the Crossroads or something like that. Do you remember doing that or not? Yeah, we used to drive those things, right? Yeah, so yeah, I think it was for them, those cars. Huh? Yeah, I remember doing it. If you have the video, send it to me. I'm yeah, curious to see. <laughs> right. It's you and Tony just you know advertising the, the car yard and stuff like that. Because uh, you we, didn't, there wasn't many. I, I seen you on the um, Sunday basketball show for the interview there yeah, with Bill yeah. Woods, but that was pretty much the only. I don't know if you did any local media or anything. But I didn't really watch much local media back in the day, but there wasn't much um, like many interviews of yourself. Yeah, they did a few things. I, I can't, you know, um, they did a bunch of stuff when I left, right? But yeah. I don't think they ever did anything with it. Um, but yeah, I, I did a couple commercials, you know, just to kind of yeah. supposedly pad my pockets, but, um, yeah. that <laughs> that's never, what, I never that's got driving around the car. <laughs> yeah. I think Newcastle still owes me some money, but that, do yeah. They? Do they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that, so. Yeah. Good luck um, getting that cause they're not around anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> my, but dude, you're not getting that, that, that money. So, yeah. um, move on. But, um. But no, if you, you run into those guys, at some point it'd be nice to get back to Australia with my family and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, friends in New Zealand, that uh, so that's not you know too too big of a, a, a you know a jump. But um, but yeah, I mean I, I had a good time. That, I mean I talk about Australia all the time. I, you see my Instagram, right? I post yeah. stuff. Yeah. I'm dunking and pointing in the face and knocking yeah. people down and all that crap. So you have to but post that walk into the stands. <laughs> yeah. Most of that's for my son, so because yeah. he's still playing, to let him know that you know, you know, he thinks I'm such a, a nice guy, and I just run my mouth. But I'm like, dude, I, I could play. Yeah, so, yeah. well, send him to the YouTube page. There's all, it's all there, mate. It's all there. Blocks, dunks, everything. <laughs> Finger pointing. But I try to get him to do that stuff, but he's like, he's too much like his mom. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Well, man, Reg, thanks for coming onto the show. Thanks for coming onto the uh, Falcons podcast, former Falcons podcast. Absolutely, and uh, send me a link or whatever uh, once you get this up. Uh, definitely, I'll share it out uh, yeah. or tweet it or whatever you know, whatever you know, method you guys have. Yeah. All right. No worries at all. And uh, hopefully, one day you can come back to Newcastle and we can catch up. Yeah, absolutely. It's good catching up, man. I'll talk to you. All right. Thanks for coming on. Okay. All right. What a great interview that was with Reggie Smith. Uh, old school interview from 1995 all the info from 95 some uh, stuff there you guys didn't know and uh, I ask the serious questions I'll get to the point that's what it's about here on the Falcons podcast the former Falcons podcast that is Uh, we're going to get out of here now thanks for Reg for coming on and uh, yeah share like and uh, comment all that type of stuff give the Falcons page a like and uh, give this podcast a like Give a couple of videos I like to. If you're on the Falcons page, go ahead. Feel free. It's all good. No worries. Thanks for coming on, Reg. And uh, thanks for listening, everyone. And we shall see you for episode number five. I don't know when that is. It'll be soon. Bye.